those of you who haven't seen this material before, I would recommend that you really try to solve uh, the problem, the, the, all, the, all the exercises in the problem session. So uh, let's start. Um, okay, so uh, the, the quantum systems are going to be modeled by uh, finite dimensional Hilbert space. So I'm going to restrict myself to, fi to finite dimensions in this, in this course, even though many of the results uh, extend beyond that. Okay, so the definition of a Hilbert space, I don't think I need to go over this. So an annotation for linear operators, right, from h to h prime is this, right, L from h to h bar, l to h prime. Uh, important, the adjoint operator, S star, you know, the S star is an operator from h prime to h, okay, which satisfies this, this uh, property relative to the inner product. Okay, so then uh, there are some important classes of operators that I'm going to be considering. So uh, unitary operators okay, are the ones for which the inverse is the adjoint. Uh, Hermitian operators for which the uh, self-adjoint. And positive operators who play an important role. So it's Hermitian operators which have a non-negative eigenvalue. Okay, it's a problem projection, uh, S squared equals S equals uh, that. Um, okay, so very quick review of uh, the way I see um, uh, the bracket notation. Okay, so I can see a ket as a linear operator from the complex numbers to a Hilbert space. Um, and uh, Okay, the adjoint of this is denoted by the bra, as we know. Uh, okay, and so then the, yeah, the inner product is naturally, okay, so if I, I can compose these two operators, the bra with the ket, and so it gives me the inner product. Okay, so, uh, yes, I will also do the outer product sometimes. Okay, so now let's get to spectral decomposition. Okay, so uh, any Hermitian operator, I can uh, uh, find an orthonormal basis, okay, which I denote here as di, such that s is written as the sum of lambda i, these are the eigenvalues, and the di's are the eigenvalues. Okay, so uh, again, s is positive, and only if all the eigenvalues are non negative. And so one thing that we're going to be doing here is uh, often applying functions to positive operators in particular, or Hermitian. And uh, so this just means that you apply the function to the eigenvalue. Okay, the same idea. Okay, so, uh, okay, so for things to, to start getting interesting to doing uh, computation and information, we will have multiple systems. We have composite systems. Okay, so uh, yeah, I have systems that are called A, B, C. In general, I'll be calling X and Y the classical systems. Okay, so and each one of these systems has an associated Hilbert space. Uh, and of course, the, the, the Hilbert space for the composite system is the tensor product of the two Hilbert spaces. Okay, and the tensor product is just, uh, you can see it as the, the vector space which is spanned by the tensor product of the vectors uh, in the Hilbert space. Okay, and the inner product is defined by as, as, as the product of the tensor products, uh, the product of the inner products for a tensor product, and then you extend it linearly. Uh, okay, and then uh, I can also define a tensor product on uh, the linear operators, right? So. So if I take S and T as linear operators, then the tensor product of these two linear operators, when it acts on tensor product vectors, it's just the tensor product outputs. Okay, and then you extend it linearly. Uh, and then there's some natural identifications that we'll be doing is, so if I take the tensor product of the set of linear operators from H A to H prime A, um, with H B to H prime B, then this is, um, identified with linear operators from H A tensor H B to H prime A tensor H prime B. Okay, and a particular
particular case of that is, is, is a question. Okay, good. So, um, uh, yeah, so this was all uh, completely abstract. Let's start with now uh, uh, modeling quantum systems. So, uh, yeah, as probably all of you know, so um, uh, the state of a quantum system is modeled by a density operator. Okay, which mathematically it's it's an operator on the Hilbert, the relative Hilbert space H uh, that is positive. Okay, so rho is positive, and it has trace one as a normalization condition. Okay, and I'll be denoting the set of density operators as S of H, okay, S for space. Um, okay, and so I'll say that the state rho is pure if it has rank one. Okay, rank one and pure for me is the same thing. Okay, one uh, vocabulary I might be using a lot is is uh, is uh, when I say the maximally mixed state is just the state which is proportional to the I okay, so in the uniform state. Okay, good. So um, yeah, so here I talk a little bit more about the, the density operator formalism. So. Um, uh, yeah, so if, if you're used to, uh, to uh, quantum states uh, just as vectors on a Hilbert space, then the corresponding density operator is the outer product of psi in itself. Um, okay, and so okay, now I'm talking operationally about how to model systems. So if I have a composite system, I have to tell you what is the corresponding Hilbert space, and it's the tensor product of the two corresponding Hilbert spaces. Okay, and, and if I prepare, if I physically prepare two systems independently, so A and B, for example, then the corresponding state is just rho A tensor rho B. Okay, but of course, in general, if there's correlations, they could be more general. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, just a notation also uh, for, for short, for now that instead of, of talking, uh, of saying HA for the Hilbert space corresponding to the system A, I'll just use A. So A is the Hilbert space and also the label of the system. Um, okay, so now, now that I defined the, the corresponding Hilbert space, what is the evolution? How does the, how does the system evolve? Um, so, uh, there's many ways in which it can evolve. So, so if uh, I have an isolated evolution on the system A, then uh, this is modeled by a unitary, okay, a unitary operator, U on acting on the Hilbert space A. Okay, and uh, if I have a composite system on AB, then after applying a unitary on A and doing nothing on B, then uh, the state after applying this transformation is modeled in this way. Okay, so we'll find A is u a tensor identity and uh, rho b. So as you notice, I, I try to, uh, when it's, uh, when possible, to, to include as a, as a subscript the, the system in, on which the, the, the operator acts. Okay. It's not always possible to do it, otherwise it would be a bit heavy, but I try to do it when it's, uh, it's needed. Okay, so this is one like so one type of evolution is this isolated evolution as a unitary. Another type of evolution is a measurement. Okay, so here a measurement uh, would be uh, modeled by uh, some operators uh, m x on the Hilbert space A. Okay, and x is the outcomes of the measurement. X labels x is just a finite set which labels the outcomes of this measurement. Okay, and of course there should be a normalization condition and the relevant one is this one. Okay, so the sum over x of mx star times mx is equal to identity. Okay, so when I do a measurement, I get two things. I get the classical outcome and a post-measurement uh, state. And so the probability of uh, outcome x is given by this formula. So trace of mx uh, rho a uh, mx star, and here I put the formula in case there is uh, another system around, the system B. Um, okay, so this is the formula for the, the probability of X, and it's easy to check here that the sum uh, of these probabilities is equal to one. Okay, and uh, it follows exactly, I mean, you can see that this condition was exactly so that this holds. Okay, and the post-measurement state is uh, given by sandwiching rho AB with these operators, mx and mx star, 
and uh, dividing by the x. Okay. So this is conditioned on seeing x. Um, okay, so here I talk specifically about, uh, okay, so you might be more used to uh, the setting where mx is a projector, okay, but uh, here in the definition I gave, it's in general, it can be more general. Uh, so the MX are arbitrary operators that satisfy these, these properties, this normalization property. Uh, okay, and with this measurement, you can you can model several things. You can model uh, like an, a unitary followed by by projected measurement. Okay, and this is what I can do here. Um, okay, yeah, maybe let let me introduce uh, the notion of PODM here, because this will, will come up a lot. Is um, Okay, so sometimes I'm not interested in the post-measurement state, right? I'm just interested in uh, the probability of the outcome. For example, I will throw away the system completely and I will just see the outcome. This is the only thing I'm interested in. And this would be, for, for example, the case when we look at uh, state discrimination. Um, and so in this case, you see that uh, the probabilities only depend on this operator, mx star uh, mx. So in this case, I just I can forget uh, the mx itself and just uh, keep uh, the the ex itself. And uh, yeah, so this this gives me a defi the definition of a POVM, so a positive operator value measure. Uh, POVM for short on A is just a family of positive operators. Now on A, that sum to identity. And uh, in this case, just uh, the probability of an outcome is just trace of ex times. Okay, good. Um, okay, so that was what I want to say for states. Um, it should be simple. So now quantum channels. Um, maybe some of you didn't see it, so so I'll try to go a little bit more slowly on quantum channels. Um, so uh, yeah, a quantum channel is, is a general way of describing the evolution of a state of a system. Okay, so um, and, and so this is this is general in the sense that the Hilbert space that you're looking at can can change. So uh, you have an input system A and an output system B. So this you can think of it as an arbitrary physical operation. So it could be, for example, forgetting a system or adding a particle or anything like that. So this this is modeled by um, uh, what we so what we see is a quantum channel. Okay, so of course, I mean, uh, so what what should be what should be the property that is satisfied by by a quantum channel? It should map the set of density operators, right, to to the set of density operators as well on B. Okay, so as you'll see, that will require a little bit more than that, and uh, I'll, I'll discuss this in a minute. So let me first give you the definition, and then we will we'll comment. Okay, so I'll say here that the quantum channel E, okay, it's a linear map from the set of uh, linear operators on A to linear operators on B. Okay, so uh, notice that the linear is natural here because uh, I would like convex combination to be mass convex combination. Uh, okay, so here are the, the two constraints that we we'll put that uh, ensure that we satisfy the two constraints corresponding to the definition of the state. Um, okay, so the first one is to ensure that positive operators stay positive. But uh, I'll ask a little bit more. Okay, and uh, so, so again, let me define it and then, and then we'll comment about it. Is, is so, uh, yeah, I say that for any input, uh, positive operator role, the output should be a positive operator. Okay? But this is not only for uh, when I input some positive operator to E, but I will also take the tensor product with um, uh, an arbitrary Hilbert space R, okay? a reference system R, and then I will just do nothing on uh, the system R. Okay? So here I, IR is just the identity on the set of linear operators on R. Okay, so, um, so it seems like a complicated definition right now because I have to test all possible Hilbert spaces. Okay, but we'll see in a minute it's actually simpler uh, in some sense. Uh, okay, so, so uh, I asked that the, 
uh, again, to summarize, I asked that this linear of this quantum channel E uh, on positive operators, it maps to positive operators, but this stays true if even if I take the tensor product with identity, with identity property. Okay, and the other natural thing is to say that it's space preserving. Okay, so if I start with a state which has trace one, then uh, I have to something which has trace one. Okay, so now I want to discuss why uh, uh, why complete positivity and not just positivity. Okay, so what would be a positive map? Um, and uh, yeah, this is the definition of a positive map is that it just maps a positive operator to a positive. Uh, so this would be the, the first thing you might uh, come up with, but it turns out that this is not very well behaved in the sense that uh, the positivity of a map is not stable on the tensor product. Okay, so you can take two positive maps and tensor product them together, and you get something which is not positive. Okay, so this is physically not, not, not valid because you should be able to, I mean, if I have two physical uh, uh, quantum channels I can apply, I should be able to do also the tensor product, right? Which is, I look at just one of the system and I apply to it the physical operation and the other system I also do the, the corresponding physical operation. So if the tensor product becomes um, uh, not, um, not physical, then this is a problem. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, here I said more specifically what do I mean by it's not stable on the tensor product. I mean that there exist positive maps E and F, right, such that if I take the tensor product, Okay, which is defined in this way, then this is not possible. Um, okay, so let's just see a little bit more uh, specifically how can this happen. So, of course, if I take input, and input which is tensor product, right, so if I take rho, which is positive, and sigma, which is positive, and I apply to it the tensor product of the, my two positive maps, then of course I will get something positive, because by construction it's just the tensor product, and the tensor product of positive operators is positive. Okay, so, and, and more generally, uh, uh, if I if I take just convex combinations of uh, rho tensor sigma, uh, uh, I will uh, also stay positive, right? So, and the convex combination of product operators, this is also called the set of separable operators of states if it's normalized, is just the convex hull of tensor product of positive operators. Okay, so. Um, uh, Yes, so, okay, again, naturally, so if I take a tensor product of positive operators uh, on separable states, uh, it will stay positive, but uh, it can fail to be positive. So E tensor F of rho can fail to be positive. If I take a state rho, which is uh, in uh, a state on A tensor A bar, but not separable. Okay, and these are exactly called the entangled states. Um, and a typical example that you, that you discuss in the problem session um, uh, most typical example is to just take uh, E to be the transpose map. So you fix the basis and you take the transpose, and you take F to be the identity map. Uh, then you will see that if you choose the row, uh, if you choose a, a, a when chosen entangled row, then you find uh, the output uh, is not positive. Uh, okay, so that's the idea. And so um, uh, on the other hand, as you'll also see in the problem session, complete positivity, which I defined uh, in the previous slide, uh, the previous slide um, uh, is stable on the tensor okay. okay, so let's look at some uh, a few simple examples uh, of quantum channels. Okay, so the first uh, example is uh, if I take a unitary operator on A, right? So um, uh, a, a quantum channel which applies this unit there operator is just uh, to conjugate T by U and U star. Okay, and it's easy to verify that this is uh, completely positive, um, right? Because uh, yeah, just in general, when you, when you sandwich a, a positive operator with uh, arbitrary operator uh, and it's conjugate and adjoint, then you get something. Okay, so I, I check. Oh, yeah, so this is actually what I wrote here. So, in general, for an arbitrary S, right, if you take uh, S, T, S star, then this is a completely positive. And, uh, okay, well, how about trace preserving? The other condition, trace preserving, this just follows from the fact that you start using the equal to identity. Okay, so. Uh, 
Okay, um, okay another uh, important map that we use uh, all the time is this the partial trace map. Okay, so this is again the map which just forgets the system. Um, <coughs> Okay, so if I have a joint state rho AD, and I just forget the P system, uh, then this is what is called the partial trace, and uh, it's defined uh, uh, in this way. So it's sum over, so I, I fix uh, some orthonormal basis of D, and um, uh, uh, I, I take the sum over D of uh, I sandwich with, uh, with these uh, operators, with these, uh, this basis on the D system. Okay, another way of seeing this partial trace, and this is the reason it's written like this, is that it's the identity map tensor and the trace map on the D system. Uh, okay. Yeah, again, the partial trace, uh, it plays the role of taking the marginal of uh, joint probability distribution. Okay, so for example, yeah, so the, special case, the special classical case, for example, if you have that the two systems A and B are classical in some fixed basis A and B, uh, like the partial trace, which again, yeah, so I, I, this is an important notation I'm using is that if I have rho AB, which is a, a joint state on AB, I use the notation rho A for uh, the partial trace over D uh, of rho A. Okay, and so it's naturally the marginal, just I think it's here the sum. Um, okay, why is this a valid channel? Uh, it's again simple to see uh, because, as I said, so these uh, maps which are obtained by sandwiching with an operator are uh, pretty positive, and then I get the sums pretty positive. Which is okay, again, trace preserving is easy to verify. So. <laughs> Okay, so now how can I see a measurement in this formalism of, uh, of quantum channels? Okay, so remember uh, uh, the way uh, we defined it is just by a set of operators mx such that the sum over mx star mx is equal to identity. And uh, yeah, so imagine I want the output of the channel to contain both the outcome, the actual outcome x, as well as the post, uh, post measurement states. Okay, so now my input uh, Hilbert space will just be A, and uh, my output Hilbert space will be X. Okay, so this is just a, a Hilbert space of dimension corresponding to the number of outcomes of my measurement, and uh, tensor product with the, with the same Hilbert space as uh, in the position. Okay, so this will contain the outcome, and, and A will contain the post measurement. Okay, and so what is the, the, the corresponding quantum channel in this case? It just has the, the following form, so it maps an arbitrary operator T to the sum over all x's of uh, here the projector on x tensor uh, mx T mx star. Okay, again, it's simple to verify that it's, uh, that it's completely positive and trace preserving by all the, all the properties that we need, by the same properties as, as what we discussed before. Okay, and so you, uh, you, it's easy to check that this is consistent with what we discussed uh, before. Remember I told you that um, uh, the probability of the outcome, x is given by this quantity, okay, and so uh, if I just uh, multiply and divide by this quantity, which we call p of x, remember we call this p of x, a uh, few slides ago. <laughs> so if I just uh, uh, multiply and divide by it, I see that just this is the probability of obtaining outcome x, and conditioned on having the, the condition on uh, the register, on this classical register, being in the state x, then the post-measurement state is exactly uh, what I see in the uh, in the A register. Okay. 
two different spaces. And um, uh, it's called the classical quantum state. Okay, so more, more specifically, so a uh, state of, this, of the following form. So I, I fix a basis of uh, the, the X system, and then uh, I write it in the following form. So the sum of the probability of, of X uh, tensor some conditional state of the A system. This is what I call C2 state of plan. Okay, good. Okay, so now I'm going to move to uh, um, how to represent the quantum channel. <coughs> um, okay, so the, the, it's, it's a linear operator, so there, there's many ways of, of uh, uh, representing it, but uh, there are some common ways of, of uh, Presenting it, which are useful in order to test whether it's a channel or not, and uh, useful in terms of uh, uh, interpretation. Okay, so so one of them will be uh, what is called uh, uh, the join operator of uh, quantum channel. Okay, and th so this will be an, an operator on A tensor B. Uh, Another one is uh, the Krauss representation. This would be uh, a list of operators from A to B. And uh, Stein spring representation would be uh, given in terms of uh, an operator from A to B tensor, another extra system B. Okay, so let's start with the, with the Choi representation. Um, so, okay, there's variants of, of it, but uh, okay, now, now I'll, I'll take a, a simple fixed one, which is uh, only a joint operator. Okay, so for that, we fix a basis. Okay, so it's basis dependent. Uh, it fi we fix a basis uh, on the A system. Remember, A is the input of the channel. Okay, and we consider uh, a system A bar, which has the same dimension as A. Okay, so think of it as a auxiliary system. And uh, what I do is um, uh, I, okay, one way to see it is that I prepare a maximally entangled state uh, between A and A bar, and I apply to the A system uh, the channel, and I leave the, the A bar system on its own. Okay. Another way to see this is just to say that, okay, so uh, like a basis of the linear operators on A is just the set of A, A prime. This forms the basis of all the linear operators. So it's sufficient to just list all these uh, out right? So E of A, A prime. So, uh, uh, and this, this Choi operator is just a way of putting, uh, of arranging this list of operators in this way, right? So you can see, uh, you can see it as a big block matrix, if you want, where I, I put uh, this matrix E of A, A prime in the uh, place corresponding to A, A prime. Okay, yeah, so there's these, uh, there's the, the mathematical point of view where it's just a, it's just a list of the, the E, A, A prime, but it also has this physical interpretation in terms of uh, preparing a fixed state, right, fixed maximum entangled state between A and A bar, and applying it to the channel to uh, the A system. Sorry, can you say again? I, I can't hear you. Ah, ah, okay. Because it's, it's, it's to distinguish it between. Ah, yes, here. Because, okay, so A and A bar are two isomorphic systems. And I just take, okay, because formally the channel is from A to B, right? So I take a copy of the A system, and it's the, it's the A bar system. And the A bar system, uh, uh, like, I don't act on it. And uh, I act on the A system with the channel. Right, so you can think of the A bar system as, as a copy of A. Okay. Um, I, I could have written A as well if you want, but, but here I would have A and A. I would have two systems which are called the same thing. Yeah. 
Yes. So, no, uh, no. G is an operator from A bar tensor B to A bar tensor B. It's an operator from, from uh, space to itself. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, you mean you mean uh, uh, yeah. So it's a matter. Yeah, sometimes I, I could have called the a bar a and a a bar. Okay, it's just that now the channel goes from a bar to b, and I define the channel to go from a to b. But it's uh, it's, it's not a big issue. It's just a, a, a naming convention. Okay, so uh, yeah. So notice that. So yeah, sometimes. So notice that here I took I took uh, uh, this state to be uh, unnormalized. So I, I didn't, so it's, um, yeah, I, I didn't write this, maybe I should. Okay, you can take the, if you normalize it just by one over dimension of A, um, then this will become a state, and so sometimes you talk of the choice state of a, of a point. So I will interchangeably choice operator or choice state, just the, the only difference is a factor of dimension of A. Okay, so yeah, so let's see some uh, few examples. Uh, so if I take the identity channel, okay, so the channel just does nothing, I don't do anything, and um, uh, so then yeah, B and A are, are the same space. Uh, then uh, okay, then of course E does nothing, and so the choice state is um, uh, uh, is just this operator, right? this maximum entangled operator. So a a a prime b prime. Okay, so if if e uh, is just uh, doing the trace, so it's a valid linear operator to trace. Then in this case, the choice space is just identity. And uh, if, uh, for example, the channel is just outputting some constant, uh, some constant say, sigma, and constant sigma the trace, then the corresponding choice state is um, uh, the identity of A tensor. Okay, so one thing you might wonder is, does this uh, capture everything? I mean, with what I said, it should be clear that it captures everything because it contains uh, the output of E of all possible uh, on, on the basis of, uh, of the set of linear operators. Um, and uh, it does indeed capture everything, and there is uh, uh, sometimes uh, there is there is even um, uh, an isomorphism, which is called the choi jamikowski isomorphism between uh, a channel and its corresponding state, its corresponding choi operator. Okay, so uh, I mean the choi and the jamikowski isomorphism are slightly different. Uh, but so here I chose the choi one um, uh, because it's a little bit simpler. And uh, you can make this even very explicit. So, uh, like you can write what is the so of course given an e, it's easy to write what is the, uh, the corresponding uh, choice state. This is exactly what I defined, but uh, I claim it's an isomorphism. So you, you can go the opposite way as well, and it's given by this map. So. Uh, from this operator J on L of A tensor B, I can construct a channel, okay, which is defined in this way. Okay, so it maps an operator A to this other operator on B, uh, which is given by taking a transpose on, uh, of this operator on the A system tensor identity and multiplying it with J and then taking partial trace. Okay, so I, I won't, uh, if you'd like to, to check this, I, I Left the calculations on the on the lecture notes. Okay, so why is this representation useful? Uh, and this is an important thing: is that um, so uh, this representation is useful as it can be used to easily check whether a given linear map is a valid quantum channel or not. Right. So in the way I, I defined it. Right? If I give you a linear operator by just specifying it in, in some way, how do you test whether it's a valid quantum channel or not? 
Okay, in the in the in the definition I gave, a priori it looks very complicated because you have to test all possible Hilbert spaces and do tensor identity and, and test um, all positive operators and that it's not something positive. This looks like quite complicated, but uh, you see now that it's actually uh, relatively simple. Okay, uh, why? Because of this fall of the following uh, observation, is that um, uh, a given quantum channel E is uh, completely positive if and only if the corresponding Choi operator is a positive operator. Okay. Right. And positivity is, is uh, relatively simple to check. Uh, right. You just have to check that, that, the, that the operator is, is, is positive. And uh, this is an important thing. It says that not only checking whether uh, whether a channel is a quantum channel is uh, can be done efficiently. It's even you can optimize uh, like a linear function, let's say, on the set of all possible quantum channels efficiently. Right? So um, uh, yeah, this is an important property here. And actually, this is to be contrasted with positivity. Okay, so you might think that testing positivity, just that uh, E of uh, some positive operator is a positive operator. You might think that this is a simpler definition, but it's actually more complicated. So, uh, because, uh, I mean, as you see in the problem session, positivity of a, of a, of a channel is related to the separability problem, okay? to, to, to testing whether a state is separable or not. And uh, this is hard, much harder than just testing that, that the operator is positive. Okay, uh, so yeah, also there is there is a way of, of seeing very easily on the Choi operator whether the map is trait preserving or not. This is just by looking at the, taking the partial trace over the B system and checking that this is equal to right end. Okay, and so uh, yeah, if you want another, uh, uh, or, yeah, another interpretation of this is that uh, uh, to to yeah, okay, no, yeah, so just um, okay. So I included a proof here, but maybe I need to go over it. So. Uh, let's just say that, okay, one direction. So if you start with a map which is completely positive, then the fact that the choice state or the choice operator is positive, this is easy, right? This is direct, right? So um, so this is positive. I by, by definition of complete positivity, if I do identity tensor E, it gives me something positive. So this is immediate. Uh, the part which, uh, which requires proof is the other side, is that if uh, this operator uh, is positive, if the Choi operator is positive, then uh, the corresponding uh, quantum channel is completely positive. Okay. And again, it's not very hard. Uh, you, you, just, uh, the, you just write the, an eigen decomposition of uh, this operator, uh, GAB, and um, uh, just by expanding things out, you will be able to write E as in this form. Right, in the source as a sum of x kx uh, times the input times kx star. Okay, and we saw that this all maps of this form are directly completely positive. Uh, okay, uh, again the, the, the trace preserving aspect is also uh, quite immediate. So it's not necessarily cooperate. Um, Okay, so, so now let's move on to, to the second uh, representation of completely positive maps or, or uh, quantum channels. It's, it's this uh, Krauss representation. And uh, it follows immediately also from the previous theorem is that any completely positive map can be written as uh, in the following form, right? So I can write it really as a sum of uh, the, the input sandwiched by kx for some uh, arbitrary operator. Uh, and these are sometimes called the Krauss operators. Okay. And uh, you see actually that this R is directly related to the rank 
of this choice. Uh, okay, and of course, again, the trace preserving aspect is related to uh, having the sum of kx star kx equal to like x. Uh, so this is sometimes called the, also the operator sum representation on the cross. Uh, okay, so the, the third uh, representation that uh, sometimes used is this uh, sign spring dilation. Um, it says the following. So if I take any completely positive map, uh, E, then I can write it as, okay, so I take my input, I sandwich it with, with, a, with an operator M, okay, which maps it from A to not B directly, but B tensor, some other uh, input space. Okay? And then, of course, the, the E, I, I don't need it anymore, so I, I take a partial trace. Okay? Okay, and uh, in this case, E is trace preserving if and only if uh, M is an isometry. So M star M is equal to identity. And yeah, <coughs> this condition is said that why it's called isometry is that it preserves norm. Right? So if I start with, with a psi with a, with a given norm, then m times psi has the same norm. Okay, and again, this is not uh, not complicated to uh, uh, to check given the Krauss representation, for example. And and one way to do it is to take uh, is this, uh, this map M, which is supposed to be an isometry if the map is trace preserving, as just the sum over X of KX tensor X. Okay. And so uh, naturally the, the E space is the, the, the space which is spanned by these uh, X's, by these labels X. Um, okay, why is this? So it's, it's also easy to see. So if you take M as <coughs> an operator times M star, you will get uh, this operator, and then when you take the partial trace over E, then we'll, uh, the cross term will go away, so you get the delta x, x, delta x, <coughs> and so you get the desired uh, E. Uh, okay, so yeah, one way of, of interpreting this, if you would like, is that um, you can uh, you can see. Uh, an, an arbitrary quantum evolution. Uh, if you take a if you take a larger space, um, so for example, yeah, if, if you add an extra space R here, uh, that you fix it, you, you put it in an arbitrary in, in some fixed uh, state zero, okay, and then uh, you apply some unitary, and you get B and some uh, also some uh, environment system E. Uh, then uh, your map from A to B corresponds to this bigger unitary of this bigger space uh, from which you yeah, you've appended zero on R and then you put the partial trace. Okay, and again, it's simple to check that such a unitary exists from uh, the previous from this previous course. Okay, good. Any question? Okay, so the last thing I wanted to mention is something that doesn't have much to do with with, uh, 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 with directly at least with states and channels, but it's it's a useful uh, let's say mathematical concept that that we'll be using starting from tomorrow, and so. Uh, uh, I thought it's good that I introduce it today, and for those who are already very familiar with, with all this material, we can focus uh, on uh, the problems in the problem session related to, to this concept. Okay, so um, uh, so yeah, so this is the idea of um, uh, functions that are uh, monotone or convex in an operator sense. Okay, so you all know what the monotone function is and what the convex function is. And uh, now uh, in, in these lectures, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we'll be applying functions a lot to operators rather than, than to scalars. Okay? Um, <clears throat> as I alluded to that uh, at the beginning when I told you you, you apply a function to the eigenvalues. 
And so uh, in this context, it's useful to define these uh, notions of operator monotone and operator complex functions. Okay, so uh, yeah, so as you know, so a function f from some interval of r, let's say, to r, uh, is said to be monotone if when I take a bigger than b, then f of a is bigger than f of b. Okay. And now I say that it's operator monotone if this holds not only if I plug in scalars, but if I plug in uh, operators. Okay, so now uh, I take any uh, dimension B, okay, and I take any Hermitian operators, A and B, uh, well, whose spectrum is included in I, okay, where, where this function is defined, then uh, I will require that if A minus, that if A is bigger than B, and here this is seen in the, this is now a partial order, right? Uh, that uh, if a, a is bigger than B, means just that A minus B is a positive operator. Okay, but A is bigger than B, uh, if A is bigger than B, then F of A is bigger, again, in this positive semi definite sense, than F of B. Okay, and uh, so the, the reason this concept is non trivial is that it's different from the, from the usual concept of monotonicity. Right? So if it was the same, then there's no need to, uh, to, to define a new thing for it. Is, and and um, you can check this by uh, seeing that there exist functions that are monotone, but not operator monotone. Okay, so I'm, and the typical example is the function x squared. Okay, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it to you as an exercise to, to show this. Okay? So you find operators A and B such that this is satisfied, but when you square them, it's not satisfied. Uh, but the, still, there are some uh, operator monotone functions, it's not a, uh, uh, and uh, typical examples are like the log function or the square root function. Okay, and you can define exactly the same thing for complexity. Okay, so exactly the same thing. Um, uh, so again, it's it's uh, defined on scalars, and then now you say that it's operator complex if it's not only true for d equals one. Notice that, yeah, so one thing that I stress on is that the usual convexity or the usual monotonicity corresponds to just saying that d equals 1. Yeah. So there are just 1 by 1 matrices, and uh, then uh, it becomes the usual definition. Here, uh, operator convexity and operator monotonicity, I, I ask that this inequality holds for any. Um, okay, and so. Um, uh, yes, so it's, it's exactly the same thing. I say uh, that f of uh, the complex combination of A and B is smaller than uh, the complex combination of the outputs. Uh, of F. And again, uh, it's uh, similar to, to before, is, is that there are examples of uh, uh, non uh, of convex but not operator convex uh, functions. Uh, and, but yeah, there are uh, also operators which are convex, and this you should do it in. Uh, the problem session. And uh, yeah, I should say that there is a there is a nice theory of, of operator convex and operator monotone functions, and they're even in some sense fully characterized. So, so we know exactly what are the functions which are uh, operator monotone and operator. Okay, and so I'm, I'm uh, on time for today, and exactly on time. So I'll stop here for today. Thank you.